I just want to state some facts about myself, um, just to be transparent. When I talked about my path and nature's way, um, it's, like I said, it, it's my way of coping with um, my resistance to divine truth, because that's where I really want to to go that's as i've said I, that's what i would like to i would like to become at one with god um and you know so some facts are that i feel i need to be honest because i, I do have this desire to share with about spirituality and um and hope to um help others in a direction of learning about love. So, if I, if I can't teach about divine truth, I'd just like to teach, at least it, it, it might even just be from an intellectual standpoint, but just to actually put the words out there and say this is where the direction we need to go if we want anything to get better on this planet and personally for anyone. So, um, so I probably need to do a, a brief overview, overview of my life. Um, so basically I was born in Australia, I am down in, in, around Newcastle, New South Wales, I moved up to Queensland when I was about two or small baby. And grew up pretty much in Queensland, in Brisbane. And um, I had, I guess you could say, a fairly average life, really. My dad and my mum both worked. I mean, my mum worked less when I was a child. And I sort of had a fairly normal upbringing in that sense. Um, and I was always... Um, I've always had a concerned. Um, I, I remember being a very um, shy little boy, <laughs> very shy, um, and that's to me how much fear I've I've imbibed from my environment and from my family of origin. Because um, what I've learnt about myself since being a child is that I'm actually a very fun-loving, jovial, crazy character who likes to be very animated and vivacious. And uh, I think that, yeah, there's a lot of things that I've discovered. And thanks to Divine Truth for that, because, you know, I, just, I really feel that if I didn't find Divine Truth, I'd be pretty stoic, I think by now I'd be very like uh, maybe zenned out or maybe dead <laughs> who knows like um, that's another topic for another video I want to do about addiction suicide you know uh, that kind of thing that's uh, um, because you know I've had to deal a lot with um, just feeling like I don't want to be on this planet and you know I'd like to share some things I've discovered about that but um, so yeah so that's sort of like a brief idea about me um, uh, I was a very sporty person Did soccer for 10 to something 12 years um, played all sorts of sports and um, very creative, uh, always drawing stuff and painting and um, always trying to make things like um, experimenting in the garden, trying to make potions with my brother and um, very imaginative, like me and my brothers would always see things in stones and um, I remember there was a man down in the backyard of our house 
and we called him Mr. Plob, but I'm not even sure if Mr. Plob was a real person, he might have been a spirit, <laughs> um, but yeah, I've always been reacting to things that aren't there in my childhood, um, I mean, that's a big topic in itself, but I'll just um, point out some things worth noting. Um, I was attracted to music in my early life, um, but I think the experiences of the formal education process made me go the, away from it. And it wasn't until high school that I started playing music and um, it's mainly because a lot of the people that I was interested in in high school were all playing music. So I started playing music. And um, so my parents split up when I was like nine years old or something, grade four, primary school. Um, and um, I think that was that was really... A big deal for me but I never felt any emotions about it really and I found a letter recently from my auntie sort of pointing out how much she saw that affect me um, so um, yeah so just fast forward high school was very um, a mixed bag of things. Um, I remember Jesus pointing out to me that he said um, I, w I would have been overcloaked most of the time <laughs> in high school, and I think he was right. Um, you know, I sort of, yeah, I think that's where a new facade got piled on an old facade and another facade, and it's like you walk. 10 steps this way, you've got a, a certain facade with this group of people, and then you 10 steps this way down to, you know, the classroom at the end of the hallway, and you've got another facade going. And I feel like that's sort of me sort of navigating around the high school situation. It's like, okay, I've got to tweak myself a little bit with these people and tweak myself a little bit with these people and tweak myself a little bit. And all coming from a space of not really having a very individualized persona. Um, just always been very quiet. And um, I think that's one of my major facades it has always been, well, just to not express myself um, don't say what you think. And I think that's part of why I've been attracted to music so much because it's a way for me to get some of the real stuff expressed, some of the real me out. Um, so yeah, music's been a big part of my life, but to be honest, I feel like my true soul is just passionate about everything and I did something really stupid like I remember asking Mary at one point I was like um, what I asked her what is my passion and she said music and I think that it I, me asking the question was coming from an addictive thing because like I was asking because I wanted confirmation about this growing desire for divine truth and um, having that as my pa my main passion is a relationship with God and I felt that that's what was happening in myself in my life and through the passions I was engaged in already I was feeling like this, like I've said before in the previous video, it's like a culmination. It's like your passions all seem to like merge all into one big powerful energy, powerful emotion, and it's all about 
that relationship with God and connecting to God and receiving a bit more of that love and and so that's the direction I sort of saw my passion and I even had an experience where I t um, presented the divine truth to a group of people in a <coughs> in a sort of classroom setting which was very ad hoc it just come about by chance it was like I was in a, um, I was in a uh, employment service agency who were giving me a training in business because I don't know anything about business. I've never been trained or taught about business, and that was an opportunity that I um, that was there at that time and. The way it works here, I was on the um, uh, on the uh, what do they call it? Employment um, benefit, the unemployment benefit, and so you're required to go look for work. And one of those opportunities, so I went with that this business course, and I think there was a period where they sort of um, there was a space of time where there was no information being presented and the person presenting sort of asked if anyone else would like to share anything because to fill in the time I'm not sure why they were. but um, so I put up my hand and it was a group of people and I said oh, I'd like to share what I'm learning about I just had the desire and and I, um, I just talked about, you know, the basics about how the secrets of the universe, that the fact that the, that there is a God, and um, I just drew it up on the whiteboard and, you know, drew God and had his uh, human soul and the two halves of the soul and, and um, so I just presented the basics and I remember after that feeling like a real like I'd done something good there I remember I felt this stirring of emotion of um, that felt really good to share that felt really good and obviously it's confronting to people to have a different um, idea presented to them um, you know, not everyone believes in God, not everyone believes in this and that. And some of the criticism was that I shouldn't have used the word God. And <laughs> um, But, you know, I felt good about just saying it, how I'd been learning it. Um, but, yeah, so I'm just, I'm, I guess now this video has become about explaining some of my resistance and... Um, and I, I feel I'd like to explain some of my resistance. Um, so yeah, basically, I put and, and I, I did this thing that that I've I've done with people who I respect and who who I who I trust. And basically, it's like they'll say something. And I always view them up above me, and they may very well be up um, above me in terms of their condition of love. Um, and because that, because of that mentality, I tend to just take it on board. And like I've alluded to in another video about this dynamic where we we want to be told what to do. Like, we don't want to take the full responsibility for our decisions. And so, being faced with heavy decisions at that period of time, I um, took what was said to me and ran with it, basically. And I, even though my in my soul I was screaming, no, um, no, this is the wrong direction for me, no, no. 
And it's, it's a really strange experience to have someone trying to help you and telling you truth but internally um, not being able to express um, what you, what's going on for yourself because you, you're resisting, you know? <laughs> you're resisting what's going on inside of yourself. And the other person, in, you're attracted to a person who's loving and trying to be helpful and say what they feel is helpful in, in your relationship, you know, going in the right direction towards more love, more truth. And you're already resisting, you're already aware of issues that you're resisting. And, and all I can say about that is that um, I need to, and any person who is seeking divine truth and divine love, and a relationship with God, you you need to be a to develop a really um, a strong feeling of responsibility, a strong feeling of this is me. I'm making decisions. I'm going to do this, and be aware of. Um, of the truth that we are self-responsible beings that's what god that's what god designed us to be and any time that we want to turn the other way and say oh this is nothing to do with me that is walking away from love that's walking away from truth that's walking away from humility and um, so in my case, I remember around that time, I was faced with this fear and I didn't want to keep processing it. I didn't want to, I didn't want to, I didn't like, I didn't like the idea of the ongoing nature of, of growing towards God. I just didn't like the idea. I didn't like the idea that day after day I'd be seeking out emotions to feel in myself. I didn't like that idea. And um, and it's hard when you can see truth and you know you're going in the wrong direction. It's not fun. It's really not fun. Um, and yeah, and that's that's the underlying feeling that I have, and that's why I'm on this path, nature's way, at this time. It's um, and to me. W Wandering in the wilderness was my way out of, you know, having that awareness of the way and seeing the importance of continually praying and how that protects you and and the, the importance to, to submit to the truth and to, and to, to not not want to throw in the towel and walk away because that's what you do when you don't want to face your resistance you don't want to feel your resistance and to be fair like i feel like this is where i'm trying to have a bit more bit more compassionate about the situation we're here in on earth because it is difficult i mean the the difficult i've the difficulty I've found is to create a soul space and be able to maintain that, maintain a soul space um, and still um, 
take care of yourself to the degree that the the world sort of presents that you need to be taking care of yourself in terms of finances and um, ha a place to live and um, things to eat and you know the basic necessities. I've got my um. It's blue from the Jungle Book there, and um, you know I, I'm going to do a video about the bare necessities because I feel that that's something that um, if God was personified on Earth and God was creating this world, God would make sure everyone had somewhere to be. And some some something to eat and something to drink, some something good to drink, water, clean, fresh, and they would have something to wear, something warm, something for the right climate. Um, and those would be gifts, wouldn't they? If God loved you, <laughs> right? And God does so. What we want to try and do on this planet is do God's way. That's what we need to do. If we want to love. If we want to love. And that's the big question here. Is do you want to love? Do you want to learn about love? Do you want to get an education in love from a higher source than yourself? And the highest source in the universe and outside the universe is the great being, God, the Oversoul. The I was going to say something very Australian then, but I won't. <laughs> um. So that's that's the 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 big decision that everyone on this planet's faced with is do you want to love and and then the next question is do you want to love God's way or do you want to love the natural way the natural love way and that's the 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 decisions we have and um so far, I've chosen to receive some of God's love, and I've chosen to um, do my path for the time being. And um, and I see that my path has quite a lack of love in it. Um, and I feel that that's the average person. The average person does have quite a lack of love in their life, in their in the in the way that they live, in the in the condition of their soul. Um. So it's good to do this to share. Because I feel like things are ramping up so much in the world in cha change and um, the forces of good and evil and it's the great big narrative of the times good versus evil and that's the, th that's the truth that you know truth always confronts error they, they, they confront each other. But truth and love will always overcome error. That's the truth. And it might not appear that way on the earth, but in the long run, justice 
God's justice, not man's justice, because man's justice is very unjust. But God's justice, it's not always unjust, man's justice, but, but you know, it's a far cry from God's justice. God's justice is supremely just. Because, you know, every error, uh, that no error is left without correction. And there's always corrective processes for our errors. And if you become sensitive to them on earth, then we can avoid a lot of corrective processing processes, experiences in when we leave the mortal coil physical body behind. So this video is a bit of just a free thinking tangent. I think I might slap on the end of this little series just because um, I don't know just speaking what I feel is relevant at this time and um, yeah speak what's what I feel is relevant what I feel is important and what's important is love because that is the thing that determines your happiness here on earth and it determines your happiness in the life after you leave the earth and um, if you can remember that one th thing if you don't remember anything I say the one thing to remember is that love is of supreme importance and it's not the world's definition of love that I'm talking about. It's not your definition of love I'm talking about. It's not even my definition of love I'm talking about. It's I'm talking about God's definition of what love is. And to learn that, that is the most important thing. And the only thing that's more important than that is to live it, to practice, to grow in the principles, grow in the lessons of love, grow and understand and do what that love motivates you to do. Because... If you receive it, it's easy. You, you'll know what to do because you're already motivated to do the right thing. So the more love you have, the better. It's always going to be better, more love. So yeah, if you are reacting to this video and you would like to express something you're welcome to send me an email or you can send me via the YouTube mechanism if there is still one. Um, but um, yeah, so you're welcome. And um, I'll address the... I don't have comments on my videos because I don't feel it's necessary. And... Um, uh, I feel like I choose not to yeah, engage with that because I feel like it's just um, it's about not giving people who want to abuse other people the opportunity because people who want to abuse it's not 
it's not something that I'm going to put up with. N not on this platform, it's not anything I'm going to put up with. I mean, um, yeah, I'm just here and I'm just sharing myself and I'm sharing what I feel is important. So this video is even longer than the last one. So I'm going to wind it up there and then I'm going to get on to the next bit and parcel of this next series of videos. So thanks for watching. All the best.